Okay, I'm joined now by Coach Brad Botch of the Bernie Mules. And, Coach, uh, hadn't talked to you in a while. I know you got a, a baby on the way here in about a month. And so, first of all, congratulations and appreciate you taking a minute to talk to everybody. You bet. Appreciate you having me on. Yeah, and, uh, you know, it's been a long season. And, and Toby and I were laughing uh, this morning. We said, you know, if you just look at the, the roster of coaches that we have talked to off and on throughout the year, Man, everybody had a good year, and some people a little better than others. They're still playing. Uh, but you guys had a heck of a year, and like we were just talking before we came on, your district final, you played Hayti. Game, you know, back and forth, tight ball game, could have gone either way. Uh, so now they're going on to the final four, and, and you and I are both at home watching it. Uh, it's always it's always tough, you know, when you when you feel like that could have been you. And you just made a great point before we started recording this that this has happened to you several times where you guys were right there and then a couple of times you've been the team that's got to go to the Final Four. And the point that I'm making is you guys play in arguably the best Class Two district in the state. And this, this happens from time to time, whether it's you or Portsville or Hayti, whoever gets out of there is the team that ends up making this run. Yeah, no doubt. Uh Aaron and I, Aaron, Coach Bidewell, and I had that uh, discussion um, a few days after our game. Is that you know it's it's oftentimes as you know as tough to get out of your district as it is anything else. And if you can get out of your own district, you know you got a great shot. But um, you know just you know it's it's still it still stings and hurts because we were right there. But you know and especially with Hate Eye still playing and. We're glad they are because, you know, we want our district represented well, but, you know, it, it, it still leaves a mark, and you, it's, it's hard to get over, you know, knowing you were that close. And that game was really a one-possession game, you know, because we fouled late to try to stop the clock. So, I mean, it was a one-possession game here or there, and if you have one less mistake or one more made shot, you know, we we could, you know, not saying that we would have done the same as, as they did with beating Oran and Hartville, but, you know, you would like to think you'd have a good chance, and you know we could equally be sitting in uh, in Springfield in the Final Four too. But you know, you got to give them a lot of credit. Gosh, they their kids play so hard, and Aaron does a great job. And man, they they really competed their their butts off in that district final with us, and and are just really on a on a roll right now. They they really are, and uh, it's kind of amazing the way that these these things happen. Toby and I were talking about this about a week ago. Between you and Hayti, we said that may have been the game, the game in the entire uh, championship round of any district in the state. Like that, and it lived up to the hype. Like you said, one possession game could have gone either way. But if, whoever came out of that was going to get the winner of Oran and St. Vincent and Chaffee, three teams that all had a good year. And then the winner yep. of, those, of, of y'all's little brouhaha is going to get the winner of Hartville, Thayer, uh, Neelyville. And, mm-hmm. uh, and and Hartville, I guess, the four over there. So it's like – Yeah, Mansfield, that, I think, was in there too. It was pretty good. That, that's it, yes. And you got – I mean, just that whole region of the state, that quarterfinal, the six or eight teams that could have won it, really. I mean, all those teams are solid, solid ball clubs. I mean, just, just getting out of that area is so tough. So having been down that road yourself, you guys have made it, made it to the Final Four a couple of times, made it to the state finals. What advice would you give uh, the other coaches that are maybe getting to go for the first time that, that are listening to this? You know, I think um, some of the best advice I got when we did get to go and um, was was just try to have as much business as usual. I mean, there's, there's a lot of distractions and a lot of things, you know, and a lot of hype, which is good. I mean, it, it does – it adds to the atmosphere and the buzz around the school and the community – but you know, as far as uh, winning and losing basketball games and preparing, you got to go about your business the same way. I think if you if you try to change things up a lot, you know, um, you're not in your routine, and you know, humans are creatures of habit. And if if uh, if we if we get out of a routine and not doing those things, we might might be a little bit you know less apt to play as well as we possibly could. So you know, and when you get up there, you know, you want to be at your best. We we were fortunate to to win two two uh, semifinal games and we got beaten the state championship, you know, two times and uh, one by two points and another by about nine, I think. And, you know, it, it's uh, it's such a difficult long road in the season to get there and so hard to get there. I don't, 
I think sometimes people don't realize how difficult it is and 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 it's it's often taken for granted but man you got to fight like crazy you know to to get scouting and you got to you got to you know the practices all year and and the uh, you know continuing to to uh, motivate kids throughout a long season is a difficult thing and you know it's a it's a long road but it's it's well worth it and you know coach Bidewell and and um you know, Coach McBride and those guys do a great job, and I'm sure they're going to w- represent the area really well. So what what is it about Hayti that makes them, you know, this group unique? You guys are in the same district every year, and you're familiar with those kids. And uh, we, we knew Hayti was going to be a good team when the year started. I, I think mm-hmm. they may have outperformed expectations, to be honest. I mean, I don't know that anybody thought they would end up where they're at. Uh, certainly possible, you know, and, and they're there now. But you, you had a good group when the year started. We had talked, you know, off and on throughout the off season. Uh, you had high expectations, and your group certainly became one of those teams with the chance to go. So, but what is it about Haiti that makes them uh, such a good team, and maybe why they've advanced this far? You know, I, I think the thing that they do is they just really make you handle the basketball, and they get you to where you can't run offense very well because of their pressure. They play so hard. They play with a lot of poise. They've got some kids that shoot it, and sometimes Haytai teams don't shoot the ball real well, but this group's got some kids that can shoot it better. It's, it's uh, you know, Darius Jones is just such a nice player. He he is so heady and calm and is a great leader out there, as is Kobe Cooper. They've got, you know, just incredible quickness. They're not really all that tall, you know, but they rebound well because of their athleticism and, and they just play so darn hard. I mean, it's, you know, sometimes we think, man, our kids are playing hard, but man, you just look out there and they're just at another level. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's so difficult to, um, get kids to understand how hard it is to, uh, to, to go 110% all game long. And their kids do that. He's got some depth. He can run them in and out. I mean, they are going to wear on you. I mean, we turned it over, seemed like a million times, and and they caused a lot of those. And and uh, as as bad as our kids wanted to win, you know, their their kids found a way to get it done. And and uh, you just got to give them a lot of credit. They just the pressure that they put on you, um, you know, the turnovers they cause, and the live ball turnovers are what we really stressed that we didn't want because it gave them, you know, uh, transition baskets. I, we felt if we could get back on. On defense, we'd have a chance to, you know, get a good stop. But, you know, once they get live ball turnovers, you're not stopping them in, in that open floor. They're just too quick. And, uh, you know, their, their rebounding and intensity is just just at another level than, than a lot of teams. Yeah, and I know that they've got uh, the, the big-time athlete, Ivory Winters, who's a, a Division oh, yeah. one football prospect. And uh, the, your buddy Jason Long put on Twitter that uh, Ivory Winters was rebounding like Dennis Rodman. <laughs> and you know, just you know, it just uh, you know, the kid's a great athlete, and he, and like you said, they play hard. Yep. What I what I always think is interesting about this time of year, and you know, we both know Aaron Bidwell really well. Not going to find a better person than Aaron Bidwell. He's just a great person. Absolutely. Uh, every, everybody that knows Aaron uh, thinks the world of him. Uh, we all know his dad. You know, legendary coach Jim mm-hmm. Bidwell. Uh, Aaron comes from that great basketball family, and I remember a few years ago, Aaron was at South Pemiscott. And Aaron had a group that won their district, and it looked like they might make a run. You know, they had a really mm-hmm. good team, and then they got in the playoffs. And Yeah, they beat uh, us in that district, actually. They, they did. And, uh, yep, uh, beat us in the district hold, final. Hold on one second here. Talk to me. Hey, come on in. Right, yeah, give me one second here. I'm on the phone. Yeah, you, you want to sit down there? Uh, yeah, I got a guy here. He's going to look at my deck for me. But uh, go ahead. Uh, what I was saying was uh, – Aaron had a group at South Penn Scott. They got in the playoffs, and they come up a little short. You know, they just uh, – the moment got to them. They had the one bad game, whatever cliche you want to use. Uh, and you just wonder, are you ever going to get back there again, you know? And at that time, Aaron had a group of young kids at South Penn Scott with the Hardeman kid and everything else. And I think a lot of people were circling this year, like for Aaron and South Penn Scott. You know, and mm-hmm. then those kids moved and everything else. So fast forward, you know, here Aaron is again, and, and I guess the point that I'm trying to make, you just never know how many of these chances you're going to get. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, to see them, you know, 
I'm kind of like you. Once they once they got past me, I've got to root for him now. Oh and sure. So you know, I, I wanted to beat you, Aaron, but once you got past me, I, I'm going to root for you. And so it is great to see you know see him coming from that family where he saw his dad do it so many times. Now he's getting to go do it do it himself. Yeah, really cool cool thing. I mean, and and you said it. You know, you just don't know how many chances you're going to get. I mean, um, I I knew we we were going to be competitive enough to have a chance and. And that's really, at, at times, that's all you can ask for. But, you know, in the end, you know, you feel like, you know, you've you got a great shot yourself. And and uh, you just you just never know how many more chances are in the cards because it's just so darn hard. It's so hard to get out of a district. I mean, and, and they're especially ours. Um, and, and not to take away, you know, anything from other districts in, in other areas, but I think, you know, you mentioned it earlier. Gosh, ours is one of the toughest in the state every year. Every single year, you know, if you can get out of your district, you feel like you got a great shot. But it's just so, so hard to get out of there. And, you know, that's just the way it is. You just you got to find a way to win it. And, and you know, if, if you don't, you tip your cap and, and uh, lace them up and start getting ready for, for the next year and, and go back at it again. Yeah, and it's, it, it's so hard to get there, like you said. And growing up as a kid at Scott County Central, we went to the state tournament when I was a kid growing up when I was in first grade, second grade, third grade, all the way to seventh grade. So we, we went seven years in a row. And then, you know, I get out and I start coaching. I just think this is the way it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And we went and won the state title in 02. Then we went and won it again in 04. And in between, we just had one bad game in 03 where we lost a heartbreaker, you know, one possession game. Mm-hmm. And I tell I tell people we were one bad night away from a three-peat, I believe. And uh, yeah. I just, you know, we just had to dodge that one bad night. But, it just goes to show, you know, how hard it is for a team like a Scott County that went that many years in a row or like, you know, we're talking about Danny Farmer tonight, Charleston. This yep. is his 16th time going to the Final Four. That's amazing. <laughs> you know, That's just, just amazing. Just incredible career that he's had. And just, you know, you take it for granted um, sometimes how, how good the coaching is in our area. Yep. And, uh, and I think you're definitely on that list of guys who – Who's good every year, and I've got no doubt you guys will be you'll be back again. So, you know the thing the thing is too is there are so many great coaches that don't even ever win a district or don't even get out. You know, and and uh, you know sometimes they don't get the the credibility you know or the you know accolades that they deserve and do great great work. You know, um, it it has a lot to do with your kids too. You know, the kids that that you coach and. and um, you know how how talented they are. I mean, there, there's a lot to be said for that. But you know those those guys like uh, you know Farmer and and uh, you know Cookson. Those it's, it's amazing. It's a, it's absolutely amazing how many times those guys got got a chance to do that. And and and, and that being said, how hard it is to do it. I mean, yeah, it's just, that's it's that, so gut wrenchingly hard. That's exactly right. You know, because for all the times that Coach Farmer's been there, I, you know, he's had a lot of those near misses that you're talking about where they, you know, like this this group of seniors, this is the fourth shot they've had at it. And yeah. the other three times, you know, it was, they got beat by the best team to come out of Crowsville in the last 20 years. Or they got beat by the best team that's come out of New Madrid in the last 10 years. You know, it's just, mm-hmm. it's you know, it may be your, your year, but it's somebody else's year too. And uh, like, like I said, I know uh, – it won't take you long. It's going to be the Burning Mules year again. So uh, well, I, 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 I'd I'd love to see that again. It's just like I say, it's so difficult just to even get out of our own district. But nothing to take away from our kids. We had a great year, and oh, you I, did. I really really going to miss these guys. They they were a great group to coach. A lot of fun, and and um, you know we really enjoyed our year and, and had some really nice wins. And you know we just want to continue to try to try to work hard and continue to win. Yeah, and I and uh, you'll do it, Coach. You're one of you're one of the good guys, and uh, I appreciate you taking a second to to talk with everybody today. You bet. Thanks for having me on, and you guys do a great job with your with your show, and and uh, really enjoy it. Okay, thanks a lot, Brad. We'll talk to you soon. Okay, thanks, Coach. Okay, bye bye. Bye.